Trigonelline, as shown here, is otherwise known as 1-methylnicotinic acid. In other words, it's nicotinic acid, a form of niacin, with an attached methyl group. Trigonelline increases NAD in mice, and if you missed that video, I'll put it in the right corner. But what about in people? So to address that, let's take a look at which foods are trigonelline rich. But first, I want to give a thanks, or say thanks, and give a shout out to Peter Morell, who pointed me to studies showing that clover seeds are one of the richest sources of trigonelline. And that's what we can see here, with trigonelline content on the y-axis per gram seed in various foods. Now, for the last video in this series, I tried increasing NAD by adding alfalfa sprouts into my diet, more specifically 132 grams per day for eight days, as alfalfa sprouts, as we can see on the chart, have about 10 uh, micromolar trigonelline per gram seed. But if you missed that video, it didn't move the needle in terms of a relatively big increase or any increase for NAD. So here we are, still trying to increase uh, NAD through diet. Now, if you notice, there are two foods that are actually a lot higher than alfalfa for trigonelline content, and that's coffee. And I'm not opposed to doing a coffee experiment, uh, but just not yet. And then also clover seeds, more specifically, crimson clover seeds or red clover seeds as shown here, which have five times higher trigonelline versus alfalfa. So with that in mind, I added clover sprouts into the diet and took alfalfa sprouts out of the diet with an almost equal replacement, 120 and a half grams of clover sprouts per day. And note that I don't know if the sprouts have as much trigonelline as the seeds as there's no published, published data, but I'm assuming that what's in the seed should be in the sprout. So I did that experiment for nine days. So then can further increasing trigonelline or dietary trigonelline as there are no supplements currently that we can take to in potentially increase NAD, can that impact blood intracellular levels of NAD? So for an April 1st test, I sent blood to Genfinity for NAD analysis. And if you want to measure your own NAD levels, there's a discount link in the video's description. So for this test, NAD was 29.6 micromolar. And this is a potential NAD increase, albeit small, but still in the right direction and a potential increase. So how do we know that that's the case? So for that, let's take a look at all NAD test results from January of 2023 through uh, April of 2024. And that's what we can see here. So I have 17 tests over that period. Now, without NAD precursors, in including nicotinic acid or NMN, NAD levels, blood intracellular NAD levels, have never been higher than 26.6 micromolar. And you can see that my range is 18.5 to 26.6 micromolar, and that's over these seven tests. In contrast, when I've had NAD precursors in the approach, NAD has always been greater than 26 micromolar. And that includes 1,000 milligrams of NMN with 39 micromolar for NAD, 61 micromolar NAD for 2,000 milligrams of NMN with 12 milligrams of B6. And you may think that B6 may not be an NAD precursor, but it declines during aging and it's a required cofactor in the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, which converts tryptophan into NAD. So I got a small increase there, 30 micromolar. And then nicotinic acid with or without tryptophan, 59 and 67 micromolar. And then low dose nicotinic acid. So you can see the higher dose nicotinic acid was 600 milligrams per day. I cut that 10x. So even at uh, 10 times lower nicotinic acid intake, 60 milligrams per day, increased NAD to 38 micromolar. And then three days before testing, so no nicotinic acid for two days, and then nicotinic acid on that third day prior to testing, that's got a small bump outside of that 26.6 micromolar range without NAD precursors at 26.8. But there's one exception to this rule, and that was at low dose NMN, 300 milligrams per day, 25.3 micromolar didn't move the needle in terms of NAD. So I would need a lot more NMN to get a big boost for NAD. Now, for the most recent test, we can see that 29.6 micromolar is outside of my uh, range without NED precursors, with the highest level being 26.6 micromolar. That's why I suggest that, uh, or that's why this data suggests that I did get a small but potential uh, increase for NED with the addition of clover sprouts into the diet. So, to add some context, for nine days before testing, before the April 1st test, my average daily intake of trigonelline, not just from clover sprouts, but from all other sources, 
as there are a few other sources, but the uh, predominant amount of trichinelline came from clover sprouts. As you can see, 110 of the 138 milligram per day average came from clover sprouts. Now to put that into perspective, we can take a look at the March 4th test where I averaged 51 milligrams of trigonelline per day. Half of that came from alfalfa sprouts. If you missed that video, I'll put the NAD playlist that contains it in the right corner. So that was one week before testing. Now there is a potential confounder in these data and that's low dose nicotinic acid, which I haven't st stopped taking completely during these two periods. And that's because I may see some benefit from low dose nicotinic acid in helping with exercise uh, recovery in terms of the effect on heart rate variability and resting heart rate. So for the March test, I supplemented with an average of 45 milligrams of nicotinic acid per day, but that didn't move the needle. As you can see, uh, NAD was 26.3 micromolar, which suggests that in my case, at least 60 milligrams of nicotinic acid per day on its own without alfalfa or clover sprouts may be uh, uh, necessary to move the needle in terms of increasing NAD. So how much nicotinic acid did I supplement with prior to the April test? So only 20 milligrams per day on average and no nicotinic acid for four days before testing. And we know that three days before testing, I barely got a bump to 26.8 with nicotinic acid. Nonetheless, 20 milligrams is a very low dose relative to where it was for the March test. So that suggests that this was a clover sprout induced small bump, about 10% increase for NED, which isn't very much. I'm hoping for a much larger gain. So with that in mind, if I increase clover sprouts, if I double their intake to 250 grams per day, will that further increase NAD? If it doesn't, and it stays about where it was, then this is just probably test to test variability uh, and not impacted by clover sprouts and their trigonelline content at all. But then additionally, I'm not just interested in NAD as a part of this experiment. What's the effect on other biomarkers? So I don't yet know uh, if clover sprouts will make a dent on other biomarkers. Will the net effect be positive? Will I get an increase in NAD and other biomarkers go in the wrong direction? I don't yet know that. So that test is scheduled for April 29th, coming up in about a week. And in, in addition, on that day, I'll send blood for metabolomics where I can quantify plasma levels of trigonelline so we can compare against other periods where I didn't have a relatively high dietary intake to see how that affects plasma levels. And I'll also take a look at epigenetics as trigonelline can act as a potential methyl, do methyl donor. So maybe that'll impact Horvath and Dunedin Pace. So stay tuned for that data coming sometime in May and early June. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for NED quantification, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB and also GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand as I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.